Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's sharpen our images by making use of an inverted vivid light layer. Use this method with caution as your images will get razor sharp. Let me go through the steps one by one. First thing we need to do is to get two copies of the current layer. I will just use the duplicate function twice to get two copies. To the top layer, I will add an invert adjustment. By default, in my settings, the adjustment is added at the top of the layer stack. So I will need to move it to the top image layer by dragging and dropping it on the layer's title so it becomes a clipped child. Next step is to change the blend mode of this layer to vivid light. When you apply an inverted vivid light to an image itself, you will get a grayscale image with a little bit of colored highlights, as you see right now. This is because the vivid light blend mode is a combination of color dodge and color burn. Let's have a quick look at this example. I have a gradient going from black to white. If I put a reverse gradient on top of it, so it goes from white to black, and set its blend mode to vivid light, look what happens. Basically, the gradient gets neutralized. The color dodge brightens the darker parts of the gradient, whereas the color burn darkens the highlights, with as a result a neutral gray image. The end result is not perfectly gray, and this is because of rounding and bending and probably the color space. If I change my color space to 16-bit, you will see it will get closer to a perfect gray. Let's go back to our image. If I now group the two layers and set its blend mode to overlay, we will not see any difference, as the neutral gray has no effect with the overlay blend mode. Indeed, there is no difference. As you see, when I turn it on and off, the image stays the same. Now comes the interesting and the fun part. If we apply a blur on the inverted image, we get this cool sharpening effect. This is also where I do things differently. Usually a median or a Gaussian blur is applied with this effect, but I like to use the motion blur. By adjusting the angle of the motion, I have more control on where I will get the sharpening effect. Pretty awesome. Let me put the blend mode back to normal and see why this works. Because of the blur, we have a small difference with the original layer. Also, this method can be used if you ever need to create a bevel or an emboss effect. Notice the science. I'm now going to use them to enhance the effect. First, let's set the blend mode back to overlay. Now, to use the cyans, I'm going to add a black and white adjustment on top of the inverted blurred image and adjust the cyan and the red. If we increase them, they will become brighter, resulting in a stronger eye color. Awesome! Of course the effect is way too much, but I'm deliberately exaggerating so you can see the effect better. Let's have a look at another image. I will apply the same steps, duplicate the image two times, apply the invert on the top copy, and then change its blend mode to vivid light. Group the two copies and use the overlay blend mode for the group, and finally add the motion blur light filter to the inverted layer. Perfect! A really nice sharp image. Let's zoom in and see the difference more clearly. Pretty awesome! However, for this image, I'm not going to use it to sharpen the whole image. I will add a mask to the group and invert it with the command I keyboard shortcut. As you can see, some parts of the face have very little details, especially around the nose area. So, I'm going to paint in with white on the mask for the areas where I want to get some details back. That looks much better and a bit of sharpening to the eyes. This is just an example how this can be used. You don't need to sharpen the whole image most of the time. Time for the final image, which will be a little bit more creative, and I will use a black and white image this time. 
and this is what we will be creating. As before, let's start with adding the sharpness effect by duplicating the image two times, applying the invert, set the blend mode to vivid light, followed by grouping and setting the blend mode of the group to overlay. To get the sharpness, as you know by now, I will add the blur to the inverted layer. So here is an example using the Gaussian blur. However, as mentioned earlier, I prefer the motion blur. The motion blur gives much more creative control on the applied sharpness. As we have a group with overlay, we can also reuse it to apply some creative effects, like adding a brightness and contrast adjustment. I will lower the brightness so I get a more contrasty image and because of that the sharpened areas are even brighter which creates this fashion model look. I think this is pretty awesome. But to give you some more inspiration we can apply a gradient map on the whole image to achieve a more golden look. After adjusting the gradient map I will set its blend mode to multiply and adjust the blend ranges so the gradient map is applied mostly on the highlights which creates this amazing shine. Finally, with the help of a curves layer, I can change the tone a bit by adjusting the individual color channels. Not bad at all. It was a fun session again and I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching, be safe and until the next video.